what drives learning requirements. In my approach to instructional systems design, performance competence requirements ultimately drive the learning requirements, but they must be modified by the specifics of each job assignment for each individual and that individual's incoming knowledge and skills based on their prior education and experience. Performance competence is the ability to perform tasks, to produce outputs, to the stakeholder requirements. Performance competence requirements, once documented and understood, can be used to systematically derive the performance-based knowledge and skill requirements. Those can be modified by taking out the job tasks that are out of scope for the individual. Just because someone has a similar job title to others doesn't mean that their job assignment specifics are exactly the same. Next, we must remove the incoming knowledge and skills that the individual has unless we intend to train them on things that they already know. That leads to an instructional path and plan requirements that matches the performance requirements of the individual given their specific job assignment and their incoming knowledge and skills. I use performance model to capture all of the job or job families performance competence requirements. We start out by looking at the outputs and the key measures. Then we look at the key tasks and try to understand the key roles and responsibilities for that task performance. Then we do a gap analysis. We look at the typical performance gaps and the probable gap causes. Regardless of whether the audience is new hires or incumbents, people need to understand what are the typical barriers to performance and how to avoid them in the first place and what to do in the second place if they are unavoidable. Next, we look at the knowledge and skills, which we can systematically derive using the performance models. We can then identify whether or not this is part of the selection system or the training will have to stand up to it. We can assess its criticality, the difficulty to learn, the volatility of that content, and the depth to which any instruction should go to the awareness level, deeper knowledge level, or actual skills development. Not everyone with the same job title has the same task and output responsibilities. The Individual Training and Development Planning Guide of the PAC Processes addresses that. The Individual Training and Development Planning Guide also allows us to account for the incoming knowledge and skills of the individual based on their prior education and experience. A training and development path and the individual training and development planning guide are simply tools to individualize the training after it's first been performanceized. Early in the path, the learner performer should be introduced to all of the training and performance support that is available and how to access it. I like to start off by providing standalone performance support or job aids initially. If that's not feasible and practical, and the risk is too high, then perhaps the performance support needs to be embedded in training where we train people on how to use the performance support or job aids. The last option is training when we need memorization. People need to know it off the top of their heads when they are confronted with the performance situation in the performance context, and there's no time to refer to any performance support or job aids. Also, sometimes the learner needs to have skills honed in the training before going out on the job. Just hearing about it one time or having one practice session may not be sufficient. I'd like to start off by offering self-paced learning or coached learning or group-paced learning as my default approaches. Performance competence requirements. They drive the knowledge and skill requirements. That can be modified by taking the job tasks that are out of scope for the individual and accounting for their incoming knowledge and skills. That leaves you with an instructional path and plan that addresses the requirements of the job for the individual. Again, performance eyes first, individualize second. Performance competence requirements ultimately drive all the learning requirements, but only after being modified by the job assignment specifics and accounting for the incoming knowledge and skills. Performance competence. It's measurable. 
It's the ability to perform tasks to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements. This is all covered in my 1999 book, Lean ISD. Lean ISD was the recipient of an award of excellence from the International Society for Performance Improvement for Instructional Communications way back in 2002. In 2011, I updated Lean ISD along with several other books and reconfigured all the content into this six pack. It's not all about learning, not at all. It is all about performance, measurable performance, performance competence, the ability to perform tasks to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements. What drives learning requirements? Performance. Focus on the performance requirements and enable them.